Welcome back to Unlock the Unusual with Tony Stein. Last week, Tony uh, paired our Kubok and Signature expression with North Ronaldy Mutton, and it was absolutely incredible. Uh, Tony, welcome back. I'm excited to see what you've got in store for us today. Hi, Scott. How are you this week? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm looking forward to try uh, creation number one, mouse watering. I've been testing all week, which has been great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough job, right? It's a tough job. Yeah, it's um, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And like I say, we're going to talk about creation one today. But before that, we should do a little bit of background as to what the creations are. Because I mentioned last week that Kubokin came from an experiment. Um, but that experimental nature has been at the core of everything we've done ever since 2005. We've used um, different yeast varieties, different levels of peat in the barley, and what we're becoming known for is the different casks that we use. Since 2005, we've filled over 50 different casks, cask types, with Kubokin spirit. And that's allowed us to uh, release Kubokin as the creations. And what they are, they're limited batch releases. And that gives us as distillers the freedom to explore flavor and our curiosity rather than stick to convention or consistency. Um, distillers for the last 30 years or so have been playing about a little bit more than ever before with different cask types made with different types of oak having held different ingredients. Um, but what we wanted to do with Kubokin is take it a step further, not just shine a light on the individual cask itself, but try and understand the flavours that we get from a particular cask and marry them with another cask. And uh, Creation One is a fascinating example of that. But before we jump into that in itself, Tony, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the style of cooking that you're known for, because you take traditional Scottish food, but add it with layers of spice and marry all those flavours together. Two things that on the surface maybe don't strike people as complementing each other. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, 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 that. Uh, Scott, the thing is, Scotland larder is just second to none in the world. And I think the perception you're right is wrong because um, people think spice in Scottish food. We've been using spice as long as we could tra uh, trade with other nations. Look at our national dress, haggis, mace in there, pepper in there. You know what I mean? These things that make our national dress fantastic. And what I've been doing with my uh, cooking and my career is um, just being lucky enough to travel, having my Sikh heritage and being exposed to spices all my life. Um, it's just a, a natural progression because we've got the best last week. We were looking at North London St. Martin. We've got the best meat. We've got the best seafood. Uh, we're going to be doing a fantastic um, langoustine dumpling with uh, smoked ham hock from Ayrshire. Uh, consommé. So it's an Asian inspired broth. We've got dumplings. We've got a traditional smoked ham hock. Uh, we're just going to cook that, clarify the stock, we're going to put uh, morels in there. It's just, it's that experimentation that Kubokin does so well. I've had the ability to um, be fortunate enough to do it because I had my own restaurant for so long. I think people take it for granted now because everybody likes to experiment and try. You can get all kinds of ingredients at the moment. But when we were doing it, it was looked a bit, a bit strange, but it worked. The main thing is, and like the production of the whiskey, it comes back in the taste. And you were saying something really interesting about consistency. You try to get it consistent, but it's a natural product. And sometimes the variations or subtle changes are there and they normally enhance the dish. I never find it that it makes it, if, if you're doing it with a, a subtle hand and the knowledge of distilling or combining flavors and ingredients, you can't really go wrong. So that's what I normally do. So when you're talking to people about this, they're maybe a little bit sceptical. Do you have a couple of favourite pairings that you suggest that people try at home, different uh, ways of taking spice and applying it to Scottish food? Um, it's a difficult one because it comes back to, oh, well, look at, just say uh, you're doing um, lentil soup. Okay, so everybody makes lentil soup. It's a fantastic uh, Scottish staple. So if you try just roasting off some cumin seeds in a dry pan, roast them until they take on a dark, dark color and you're getting a, a smell like roasted coffee and then pop some butter in there. So you've tempered the butter with the roasted cumin seed and pop that into your lentil soup. 
however you normally make it with tomatoes, without tomatoes, with stock, meat stock, without meat stock, and add that cumin tempered butter, phenomenal. Really, really good. Yeah. That's or good. It comes back to a, a classic strawberry. Scottish strawberries just now best. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, the French say they've got them, but we've got the best strawberries in the world in the middle of, well, end of July, August from Persia. Black pepper, crushed black pepper, some cinnamon sticks brought to a boil in a light syrup and just poured over your strawberries. And that, it's a classic. You see strawberries and black pepper because it works, but that addition of cinnamon, that sweet perfume cinnamon from Sri Lanka, just lifts everything together. Amazing. I've got a punnet of strawberries in the fridge. I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. Can't wait to try that. Um, and talking about marrying flavours together, let's talk a little bit about this beautiful whiskey creation one that we've got in front of us. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here is we've taken two cask types that give very, very different flavours that complement each other fantastically. So the first cask type that we're using, and it makes up the majority of the recipe, is Moscatal de Setubal casks from our partners Bacaloa over in Portugal. And their Moscatel in itself has a lovely orange blossom honeyed flavor. And those flavors really carry through the maturation and into the whiskey wonderfully well. And it's quite a sweet whiskey in and of itself. But what we've done to complement that is we've used uh, Imperial Stout casks from the Black Hell Brewery. They got in touch with us a few years back and asked for whiskey casks to mature a beer in. We gave them the casks and then we took receipt of the casks after they had bottled the beer. And that whiskey is full of notes of like tobacco and it's got that almost hoppy flavor to it as well. Absolutely fascinating stuff, really herbaceous. So you marry that um, almost bitter beer flavor with that Moscatel flavor and it becomes an incredible, incredible whiskey. What do you think of this here? It's great, what I love about it. It's got body, it's got depth, it's still got that sweetness there. But the mouthfeel, it lingers, it's great. That's why I've done the smoked ham hock consomme, um, because you've got a bit of potency in there. Uh, the, the body of the stock, because it's a really rich stock, we cooked the ham hocks off, we reduced it down and we clarified it. We put morels in there as well to add that smokiness. And that just, it's fantastic with creation one. Uh, and what we've done with the broth as well, we've got black garlic. So it's garlic that's cooked at a low temperature for a few weeks and it adds a richness and umami to it. Umami, it's quite funny. It's always mouthful when we were training. And we use the trimmings of the morels, dried morels, in the clarification. So you add that subtle smokiness. Morels fresh are lovely, but I think once they are dried, it intensifies the flavour and it's just so much nicer. And with that, we have some bok choy, we talked about some of your greens. But the interesting thing with this dish is the dumplings, we made a, a, a farce with langoustines, West Coast langoustines, but we made a gingerbread cake, like a Jamaican style gingerbread cake, rich and moist and full of that molasses, sweet, gingery spiciness. And then we baked, uh, grilled it and we broke it up and we put it inside the dumpling just so you've got that carrying all the way through you've got sweetness off the langoustine anyway dumpling goes there and we've got this lovely ham hock rich meaty ham hock going in and then another dumpling i can't wait to get off screen and eat this actually <laughs> i there. think i said it last week i wish i was there with you to have some so the langoustines we've just blanked, it's just cooked because when we pour the hot the consomme over it, I'll keep cooking. And if it's just a little bit under, that's fine as well. And then another morel. And we're going to add It nearly, it's the same amber golden of creation one, which I love. It sounds like the, the from the langoustines and from the, the gingerbread there marries quite well with the Moscatel flavour of the whiskey and then the slightly more umami earthy tones with the, the Black Isle Brewery casks. It, what was the, 
it was a cast, it was the, the stout cast that we've got. So I don't know if you can see it there, but that's it there. And it is a fantastic eating dish. It looks a bit pretty, but that, the light smokiness from the morels, the sweetness from the langoustines, smokiness from the ham hocks, and then the gingerbread in it, it's just awesome. It's something unexpected like Creation One. But the mouthfeel in this marries so well with that, with the ham, ham hock, and the maminess of the, the stock. That sounds incredible. Now, tell me a little bit more about umami because it's widely regarded as the fifth flavour, but I think a lot of people maybe don't understand it as well as they do the other flavours. Well, when we were training, umami was always classified as mouthfeel, and we talk about it when we drink whiskey. Yeah. So I would always look at it as always mouthfeel, that richness, that roundness, that uh, umami is normally equated with earthiness and savouriness and meatiness. But you get great amounts of umami from mushrooms, seaweed, uh, black garlic. So it's not really, in my mind, a meaty flavour. I like it because it rounds everything off and brings it together. So it's a savoury, it's a savoury kind of binder. You know what I mean? If you've got something you want to bring in together, so you're looking at something earthy to go in, say maybe uh, mushroom powder, or you're looking at a reduced meat stock, or black garlic, anything that adds that depth and brings your other, or use it as a backbone for your other lighter, delicate flavours. Well, that sounds incredible. And it sounds a little bit like the way we build a whiskey as well. So this is pairing incredibly well together. Um, we've got one more dram and one more dish to go. So I'm looking forward to chatting to you next week and finding out what you've got in store there. Tony, thank you again and Slanjava. Slanjava.